everybody welcome back to our channel and welcome back to another video so today's video is going to be a couple of planner walkthroughs so i'm going to just do them both at one time so that you all can see them and so i can really start working in them yes i'm filming this on new year's day so i haven't written in them yet because i haven't filmed it yet but i'm filming it now so that i can write in them and really get moving. So I have two planners that I want to show you today. One is the Christian planner. Now I've had a Christian planner before. Um, it's the burgundy one that I've been using and I write my sermon notes and stuff in. So this is the 2021 Christian planner. And this is from christianplanner.com. This is in the pink. Now, um, a friend of mine sent this to me. Uh, a friend of mine gave this to me. She didn't send it to me. She lives here where I live. Um, and she had an extra one. So she was like, hey, Shakima, do you want to use this? And I was like, sure. Um, so this is the Christian Planner 2001. And I've had, like I said, I had one before, but they changed a few things, which I do like. So I do want to walk you through this planner very, very briefly to show you some of the newer features. Um that I really do like and some of the things that I'm planning to uh, use this for. And then the second one I wanna show you is Go Girl Planner. This is an undated monthly, a weekly and monthly planner. Achieve your goals, increase productivity, passion, and happiness in your life. And I'm gonna be using this for my health journey and my financial journey. So this Go Girl Planner is going to be my health journal, health planner, and my finances. So I know they have um, other finance planners, but I don't have one. And my son got this for me, but I had already had this. My son got this for me for Christmas. He didn't realize I had this. So um, I didn't want to send his gift back. I guess I could have, but this is a hardcover in the size. Uh, this is an A5 size. And this is larger than an A5 size, right? That's larger than an A5. My favorite planners are full-sized. Um, they're not the most convenient to carry around because sometimes I don't carry a large purse. But as far as me being able to see and write stuff in, um, I prefer the larger planner. I also prefer the ones that lay flat, uh, that I can lay flat because sometimes... I'm writing and the top will close, you know, so I have to keep my hand over here and I don't want to smudge. Again, I'm a functional planner. I am not a pretty planner. So sometimes I'll put pretty things in there and other times I'm like, that's team too much. I just need to write stuff down. So that's how I do that. Now for my YouTube stuff, for all of my one mom things, what I do is I use a digital calendar. I use Google Calendar. I go in and make an event uh, for all day. And then I put in what it is and it populates a color. So I make all of my YouTube postings different colors. Today is uh, January 1st, so the budget video goes out today. Um, on the 4th, which is Monday, uh, my sinking funds, not my sinking funds, my um, cash envelopes video will go out because the bank is open and I'll go get all my money out and then I will uh, do my cash envelopes. And I've also got a review for that video. So I wanted to show you this guys really quickly. This comes in the Go Girl Planner and see just how tiny that is. Y'all, I have glasses and I'm thinking, I need a magnifying glass just to read this. But I guess, you know, if I'm reading it up close. So there's five steps or five things in this planner. You have the vision and goals. That's not gonna be my life's vision. I'm just gonna make that my um, uh, budget goals. Um. And then my top five budget goals plus a mind map. So how do I plan to achieve those goals? The next part is your day, um, my strategies and daily rituals. Now, I don't have rituals. I just have routines. So my daily routines. And what I'm going to do on those pages is, you know how sometimes in my planner, I would write down if I got money on that specific day. So I'm going to put in where did I spend money? So that way, I'm not looking in my old planner. I'm not looking in my notebook that I was using at work. I'm just looking in one place to tell me on which day I spent money or had money come in or where did I allocate it? One place. Um, 
then I have the monthly calendar. And on that page, I plan to put like today's the first and I got a deposit. So I would put in uh, deposit and where it came from and that's it. So no appointments, no, none of my personal stuff is going in this um, planner at all. This will just be for finances. And then the last thing is my weekly plan. So if I know that I have a bill coming due, I'm going to write it down. If I know that I need, I paid something that day, I'll write it on that weekly plan. I'm sure that a finance journal might be better, but I don't have one. And I'm going to make use of the things that I have. If you, you want to send me a finance journal to preview, if you're a company watching this and you want Shakima to preview your finance journal, I'll be happy to but I'm not going to spend money. I'm just going to use the resources that I have. In 2021, because there are so many goals, I'm just going to use the stuff I have in this house. I've got a lot of stuff. And I keep giving away stuff, but I have stuff. So I'm going to use what I have. So let me take you down to a view of my desk so that you can see what these two new planners look like. All right, y'all. So we're going to start with the Christian planner. So this is the 2021 Christian planner. This is a hardcover. Um, it's in the pink. They did have several other colors. So this is not sponsored. Um, a friend of mine gave this to me. She doesn't work for their company or anything like that. She just had an extra one. I think she won a giveaway or something like that. She had three of them. She was able to give one away. She kept one and then she gave me this one. So um, I didn't pay for this at all. So when you open it up, it opens up to uh, these are tiny crosses on this page, which is really pretty. All right, then it tells you all the copyright information. And then, you know, this planner belongs to. And then christianplanner.com is where you can go to order one of these. Now, last year I had, I bought my own. Um, I still bought my own Christian planner. Not last year, the year before last. Last year I had a prayerful planner. The year before I had a Christian planner. And I've used it consistently. Um. Okay. Now, when I turn the page, it says, uh, it just gives me a welcome and then how to use the planner. Um, so there is a vision board. There is a habit goals chart. Then there is every week, um, my weekly devotionals. And then every day, um, appointments, tasks. Then there's a habit tracker. And then every month, you're writing all of your big monthly events and goals. So monthly goals, monthly events. Um, here, it gives you a year at a glance calendar with all of your holidays listed at the bottom. So I usually go in and just take little sticky dots and mark, you know, mark those days. But I was thinking also about marking down the days that I have to preach if I'm going off away from home. Um, women's conference, ladies conference is coming up in February. So I'm going to mark out those dates. Um, right now I won't share dates yet because I want to confirm, but uh, ladies conference is going to be in February. It'll be all virtual this year, uh, just to keep with that theme until we can get this uh, pandemic under control, but we will be having it. I'm still trying to work out some, a few little logistics, um, about the ladies conference. So if you tuned in last year, let me know if you liked it via Facebook, because I'm thinking about going more to a closed session this year, but I'm not sure yet. Still going to wager that out. So um, yeah, that's how we're, we're planning that. So I want to make sure that I mark up. I want to mark any, um, any important spiritual dates. I know that I've been asked to come and speak in March somewhere. Uh, my dad's having a lot of stuff going on this year at his church that he wants me to come to, to be a part of. Um, my one year anniversary of being ordained a pastor is going to be coming up on the 11th. So I want to just make those special dates here. Now, once I turn the page, this is really neat. It tells me about the seasons and what is important about that season. So Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, after Epiphany, Lent. Um, the great triumph and then uh, Easter and then after Pentecost and what was uh, cons um, what was significant about that time and then it gives me a spirit spiritual challenge so repent of my sins you know embrace the incar uh, incar incarnational spirituality Christ being born of a virgin make a new commitment to God so if you haven't done any of those things 
it challenges you to do those things. Of course, I've made a decision for Jesus and we live that life around here. Um, then this changes. And last year, these pages were side by side. They weren't like top of each other. So I have a vision board. And then this is where I would put my vision for this year. And sometimes I have done in the past, I put visions, you know, for more than one year. I think I'm just going to try to do one year. I remember doing my vision board two years ago. I should really show you guys that where women's ministry was really important to me. And I wanted to be moving into women's ministry and look at where I am now. So you got to sometimes go back and look at stuff and be like, wow, look what God has done. Then you have a bucket list. And so you would write out your bucket list. Um in 2021, in five years, and then in my whole lifetime, what do I want to do or accomplish? Where do I want to go? You know, that type of thing. So that is there. All right. Then it gives you your health goals. So a couple of health goals, daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly. So it breaks these up into those types of goals. And then here, for my uh, 2021, write your goals you would like to accomplish this year. So all of my major life goals, kids goals, mom goals, um, money goals, just basic money goals um, for my family, not necessarily for my channel, but for my family. Then this takes us into the two-page monthly spread, which I like. It gives me um, top three things or task or to-do list going down the side. Um, it gives me a place at the bottom to do reflection and then a place on the other side to do action steps. So at the top, you have a verse and this is a dated calendar. So it is dated. Two page monthly spread. You could also, I could also make this a devotional journal. If I was like today, my devotion was Ephesians 3, 2021. So I could write that in this box. I don't have to necessarily make this my my planner for the year if I don't have one um, and I don't like really having terribly too many ca calendars although I do appreciate having them separated but I do at times like having them all in one place but I could definitely put in my daily devotions so that I would be able to see as the month went on what days I was and what I was studying after you turn the page, it gives you a little bit of a monthly finance tracker. This is nowhere near big enough for all the things I do or need to budget for the month. Um, it's just not even near it. But I could put in a few things here with no problems. Then they added in a coloring page, which I'm not a colorer. But um, hey, you never know. And then it also has a verse. So I think that's neat. The month is at the top here. And it goes all the way down so you could tell what the months are. You could put tab, tabs in if you wanted to. Um, then this gives you two-page spread for your weekend devotionals. And I thought, hey, I don't have to just do this on the weekend. I could actually break this up into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So, you know, I could break that up if I wanted to just keep a running total of my devotions for the week. But this gives you a weekend devotional. Um, cause I'm thinking they're thinking Saturday and Sunday or sun, you know, whichever day you use for worship. And the second page is aligned. The first page is unlined, but the second page is lined. And then it takes you into the week. So your habit tracker is at the bottom. If you wanted to just say, um, Bible reading, if you wanted to keep this all, um, you know, about your religious journey, about your spiritual journey, spiritual. You could say um, scripture study, Bible group, um, you know, anything that had devotions, um, personal Bible studies, this book I'm reading, you know, reading this devotional or whatever. So you could do that instead of making this drink your water, walk outside, you know. But if you're using this as a a life planner for every day, then you could put all those habits there. So you can customize it for your needs. You have a free space here. So again, if you're using that for every day, you could put your um, grocery list there. You could put your grocery list here. At the bottom of every page, you could put your meal plan. 
Or if you do three meals, you could use the last three lines because every day then breaks it down into almost like the happy planner where it's that vertical journal or that vertical space. Dates, it is dated. So today is January 1st, which is where we're starting here. And then you have that um, weekend devotional again. And then it pops you into the next week, right? So that goes all the way through for the end of the year. New coloring pages. So that was really neat to see. And then they also give you these strings. So you have these placeholders that you can use. I think you get two of those. Yeah, you get two placeholders to keep your place. So that's just a quick run through of this one. And then I have this Go Girl, which is undated, which is pretty good. Again, my son bought this from Amazon for my Christmas gift. So nothing is sponsored. It's just what I'm using. So I open this. It is the hardcover in the rose gold. Very cute. Very nice pattern. He sent it via Amazon since he didn't get a chance to come home this time. Um, just your basic information in case it gets lost. Um, here's my life's big picture. So again, this would probably be more for my one mom and my finances. So what am I visioning for one mom? And then here are my goals, what I want for my channel. This of course gives you health, family, career, and you can put those goals there because I think there's another one that asks you for goals. Yeah. So if you wanted to just give goals for these things that they have here, my financial, my spiritual, my personal development, you could do that. And then if you moved over, you could do like here, I could do my top five financial goals and then um, action steps. So I get five goals and then five action steps for those goals. And then I could map it out if I wanted to do that in pictures. You could also cut out pictures which I do, I don't draw, so I could also cut out pictures that would uh, represent these goals. Moving further, um, my strategies, how am I going to make those goals? And then I have my daily routines. What do I do every day to help these goals? What do I do every week to help these goals? What, what do I think I should be doing? Um, this is my affirmations. I really like this. Um, if you're in debt, but you're working on it, I will be debt-free by so-and-so. I'm going to be gazelle intense. My family will not have the same um, financial narrative that my family who was previously in debt did. Whatever your affirmations are, and you want to put them here so that you can always remind yourself of who you are and what you are and what the word says about your situation. This right here says, I'm grateful for everything you're grateful for. If you're using, if you want to use this as a personal planner, I'm just using this as a financial planner, but you can, I'm grateful for my children. I'm grateful for having a job. I'm grateful for, um, being, you know, receiving unemployment, whatever you're grateful for, for. I, I don't know your situation. So you would be able to put that here better than I can, you know, come up with an example. I'm grateful for being employed. I'm grateful for being able to work virtually at times when I'm able to. Some of my classes are all virtual. I never go to a classroom anymore just because that's the nature of those children. Some students are 100% online. I might go to that classroom to work with that teacher to get into their rooms, but I'm, I have the ability to now work virtually and that's a beautiful thing. Then when you go to your um, two-page month, which is what I'm planning to use this for, so I would then put in today was the first and I got a deposit. So I would put in the amount and where it came from. And that's all I would do there. And then, so this is going to give me a very, very clear view of when money is coming in. Also, I might, I just probably want to use this to know when money is coming in. And then when I go to, and you have 12 months of that, the one thing I don't like about certain calendars is they don't put the weeks and months together and I'd rather have my weeks and months together because then I have to flip all the way over to behind the 12 months 
to then start my weeks. And I'm that's not my favorite, but it's okay. I can work it out. Um, after all your 12 months, you have your month and year in review. So if I wanted to go in and say, okay, for the month of, you know, whatever, whatever. No, that's not right. Month and year. Oh, sorry, that's wrong. Month and year. So I would put January 2021, and this would be the first week of January. It's a two-page week spread. So it goes Monday through Sunday. If I wanted to write down or reflect or write down my numbers like I normally do, or it gives me that dot grid spread that I can do that here at the bottom. Um, my priorities this week, if I have any bills that are coming due, to-do list, to call, make appointments, schedule things. Sometimes I have to, you know, I want to write down a confirmation number or something like that. Um, and then a tracker, if I wanted to put some financial things here. Did I save this week? What days? Did I spend this week? What days? You know, anything that I want to track. And so it gives you 52 weeks of those two page spreads and then you have notes pages at the back so a lot of dot grid um, notes pages and it does come with a few stickers so it comes with some really 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 pretty stickers and then it also has these tab, uh, tab dividers or placeholders and then it also tells us that we have a 60 day money back guarantee if for some reason something's wrong with it we don't love it um, they will take it back. I don't plan to send it back after I've written in, in it, but if there's a defect, a de you know, something that's just wrong with it, that's their 60 day money back guarantee. And then it also has that elastic to keep it closed and then a place to hold your pen. So rose gold, go girl, undated, yearly, monthly planner. Alrighty, you guys. So there it is. Just a quick little run through. Again, nothing sponsored. These are things that I have around the house that I'm just planning to utilize because I really just don't want to keep buying stuff, buying stuff, buying stuff. Sometimes now I have not achieved planner peace 100%. Haven't. Just can't figure out why. But a couple things that I, I know about me. I like to write things down. So I have to have a paper planner of some kind. But I also enjoy um, planning in my Google Calendar. And Google Calendar give, Google gives you a calendar um, in their Google Suite. So I think you should use it. The one thing I love about Google Calendar is that I can pull up my calendar on my phone. If I can't take, if I physically cannot take my calendars with me, my purse is too small that day. Or I leave it home by accident. If I put something in Google Calendar, I'm always able to go back into my, my Google Calendar, pull it up. I can see, oh, grocery haul today, Shakima, don't forget. Or, oh, the kids have to be somewhere. Or, oh, don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I appreciate being able to know at a moment. And most of us are virtual these days. So, utilize those calendars uh, that they give you access to. I looked at something called a Life Journal um, that I was going to try to to order. It was virtual, all virtual. But I'm thinking, Shakima, why would you pay money for that when you have Google? I've got Google. I've got Google Docs. I've got Google Sheets. All that stuff is free. I just have to be able to use it and use it enough so that it becomes second nature to me, which it does. And then I'm able to just move along without spending a lot of money. No, it's not all in that one little confined boxes of spaces, but all I have to do is click on my waffle. I'm at Google. I'm at Docs. I'm at Sheets. I'm at Drive. And everything is in one compact space. So I appreciate that. But again, like I said, I still do like my paper. So I'm not going to not use paper. I am. That's my commitment to me and to my son who spent money on this. Would I like a, a different financial planner? Maybe. I, I haven't researched it enough to know. But I'm just going to utilize this. This will help me do what I need to do at a very quick glance. I just want to know, okay, what day did that did that money come in? Oh, okay, that money came in. Perfect. So I just write down. I can look. Then I'm like, oh, okay, how did I spend that money? Right here. Well, Shakima, this is all the things that you paid for 
all the funds you sank or whatever it is. And yes, of course, I still do my monthly budget sheet. No, I will never not do my monthly budget sheet. When I took Dave Ramsey, I took Dave seriously. And so um, Dave has helped me. Dave has helped my life and I'm thankful. And I'm always going to use uh, that budget sheet to keep me together. But then again, sometimes, especially when I'm explaining things to you guys, I'm like, oh, what did I spend that money on? Well, oh yeah, that was for blah, blah, blah. Or I've written it down on a sheet of paper or, or a napkin or something, you know, because I'm trying to write it down and get it out of my head. Um, and I probably couldn't even make a Google Doc and just write it in. So maybe I'll do that. I don't know, but I'm going to try my best to utilize this planner for that specific purpose. It's not a finance, it's not a finance planner, but I am going to make it my own. And I'm very appreciative of my son for sending that to me. Um, it, it is very helpful. So anywho, there it is, you guys. Just wanted to make sure that you all saw those couple planners that I'm using. Don't, um, you know, charge me too hard if I change mid-year mid or whatever, but I'm going to do my best. Or if I miss a couple days of writing something down, um, I'm going to do my best. So I did want to start writing in these today. And so that's why I decided to just do a quick little run through. I know some people like to know what I'm using. Tell me what you're using. If you found planner piece, say, hey, Shakima, this is what I'm using. And you know, this is what I do with it. So let me know what you're using for your 2021 uh, planner of the year. And that would help me out. So there it is, you guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you liked the video, thumb it up. Don't forget to subscribe. Please check to make sure that you are subscribed. Sometimes YouTube unsubscribes people for whatever reason. So people are like, she came out, I thought I was subscribed and, and I'm not. Please make sure that you are subscribed. We do appreciate everything that you do for us over here. Every ad you watch, every video you watch, every interaction in the comments, all the things. I do hope that you guys joined us are joining us for our 365 day devotional challenge. The first devotion is already up over in the community tab. If you haven't seen it run over, um, you can do your devotions right in your in this Christian planner with no problem. So I do want to thank you guys again so much for stopping by and we'll see you next time. Bye now.